All right, episode five, a quintessential paladin, Leroy Taffer, king of the expendables. We have finished up. We have reached the walls of Nicaea. We are actually in the Turkish lands. We won our first battle against an escort group that we fought. Really, when we reach Nicaea, we have no chance of breaching the two mile long walls, not with the type of people that we have mercenaries and we have the pox the poor people of christ and we have an assemblage of other combatants strong and weak the walls of nicaea they had 240 archer billets of turrets if we were to try to storm the walls yeah we all would have been cut down i mean even though there's probably 70,000 of us here but we do have a lot of success raiding in uh, the suburbs around the city and we attack those people these would be the people that most likely were barred from actually living in the city center itself. So, you may have guessed, we're back to slaughtering Christians and Jews who just fall into our hands. Should we make a roll here? Well, we're fighting in the countryside around Nicaea, and we should start this with a nice, uh, pious quest fight. I go to my referees page, I have a lot of fostering faith, so if I roll something where I might lose my destined status definitely don't want to lose my destined status. I would just use my mulligans. So here comes my die roll, d6 under Pius. And a six is going to be defeat a dark knight and foster faith. I like tokens. I like my lemon drops. My lemon drops are a source of my power. Okay, here's my six lemon drops, and I'm gonna to have to defeat a dark knight and foster faith. So here comes my defeat of the dark knight. How do I do that? Test of prowess. Yes, test of prowess is the one thing I will use and use a lot in this game system. And here comes my two die six. And I roll them bones. I got a six and a two. I take the higher of the die, add one for destined status, and I have defeated my dark knight. We gathered food. Very few tried to stop that. Many just wept. A son protested as his mother was pushed. He tried to push us back with a pitchfork. His mistake. He was dead a moment later. It was then I noticed the two nails welded into a cross around his neck. I insisted this mother's son be buried. When no one rushed to comply, I grabbed a shovel myself. I have defeated with my fellow crusaders people on the outskirts of the town. Now the Sultan Arslan believes that he has lost all his prestige by letting us uh, constantly raid his countryside. And he wants immediate revenge, but he actually listens to his advisors, which convince him to wait for the larger army to arrive. Now he will not have to wait very long. And also the first noble crusaders are starting to arrive in Constantinople and they're uh, starting to assemble and they're surprised that another group of crusaders has actually arrived before them. Those knights are the ones that were collectively assembled by Bishop Adamar, the man who carries the actual Pope's cross that symbolizes the holy indulgences, the papal bull that sets Christians to go to the Holy Land. But we're still in September 1096. Two weeks after the first attack around Nicaea, some 6,000 mercenaries left the besieged city and marched off toward the east. Could be what Walter Pousset did with his pearls. He hired mercenaries because that's who I meet, uh, Walter Pousset. Walter Pousset is back with the group and he takes 6,000 mercenaries. Now his strategy appears to be to seize all the peasants around a certain area and offer them the choice of immediately converting to Christianity and being his serfs or die by crucifixion. Boy, there is definitely a theme here. Walter's soldiers capture the ungarrisoned fortress of Zaragordon. This was the barracks of the first defeated cavalry patrols that we faced with the Turks. Now Walter Pousset decides he has found his castle, out of which he can continue to raid the countryside. He sets up home there, but in a few days, the main Turk force arrives, coming to relieve Nicaea and rescue Sultan Arslan. Now they arrive to prove that Walter the Burgundian, our Lord Pousset, is outnumbered, surrounded by the Turks, he does not own that land, he's trespassing. And for our story, I should be back in Sevetot, but a little bit of artistic license here, and I too am there with David the Houndsman, uh, should I need the soak off, and we're gonna fight this big battle of Pious Quest. Let me go back, we're fighting around Zara Gordon, and I'm gonna roll one die for Pious Quest here, D6, and I rolled a three. Defeat a D6 fell ones to foster faith. You'll notice a lot of these will foster faith. I probably should be pruning myself, and I probably will. I'll say, ah, I've got enough foster faith now. If I run out, I'll restock them again. 
I originally said probably in one of the early episodes that Quintessential Paladin is a odd game of sorts, and I watch me get close to death here for not taking every advantage I can get. There comes a time when, as a referee, I could step in and say, well, I got six of those uh, mulligans do-overs. Hard in terms of the actual game, you use these fostering faith to outnumber the number of dark knights in a certain campaign or event or scenario or story. And once you have enough fostering faith to outnumber the dark knights, you can enter the climax as well. I'm going to use the climax only when I reach Jerusalem. New episode, I have my plot armor again. But I'm going to uh, D6 fell ones. Let's see if I can get a D6 fell ones. It's going to be five fell ones. That's a lot. Tests of prowess. I'm a justice man. Tests of prowess, defeating five fell ones. Here comes my first roll, 2d6, and I'm gonna get a three and a two. Now the best roll there is a three, which becomes a four. Careful, defeat one fell one, or gain a modifier to treat any roll of four as a six. Taking the modifier adds a dark knight. I sat on my haunches, filling my cup from the trickle of a stream. Something blocked the sunlight, and for an instant, I thought I saw Walter the Penniless. I even called out, greeted him. Then I wondered if he was a spirit, or I too was dead. A delusion. I dropped my cup. I wondered if Walter Sansevois was ever a friend, or ever the foe. Would he understand this as a game of chance? I was pretty sure Walter Pousset was a lost cause. As a good Catholic, I forgive. In the moment of reflection, the Turk scouts, the people who actually were blocking the sun, realized I wasn't a harmless hermit. They may have not known my role of importance among the pleb, but they saw by my tilting sheath as I stood that I was a frangy soldier. The fight was joined. Reasoned myself that I probably can go ahead and uh and should take the modifier. In this case, all I need is that six. I can defeat all these five fell runs, or it should say four now. So I'm going to take this again as defeat one fell one. I now have four that I have to fight. Here comes my next roll. 2d6, a four and a three. A four becomes a five. Defeat one fell one, or gain a modifier to treat a five as a six. Well, again, I'll just defeat the fell one. There are three that I need to defeat now. I admire the Turkish horse bow. Ribbons of scarlet, an integral unit of shared heritage. I daydreamed of a time when I too might ride in fire, squeezing my knees to stay mounted. Or was that a mistress fantasy? One archer ranged too close to our walled keep. I cold-cocked him with a lead tile. A detachment of the Swabians applauded. Gewicht, gewicht. Here comes my roll. A five and a five. A five plus one for destined status becomes a six. It's a mighty act, and I finally defeat all of the fell ones, or a dark knight or circumvent. So the three remaining fell ones, they go down as easy as uh, ten pins. Trumpet blasts called back the Turks as night fell. I could see additional columns of arriving forces. I didn't have to wait to count campfires to know I was fucked. We all were. And I've defeated the five fell ones, my part of the story. As they attacked us at uh, Zaragordon, I was in the field fighting to get back. Do I make my escape here or not? Hmm. I probably haven't made my escape yet. I probably have just retreated back with as much as the garrison we could get into the castle there. And now we're wondering, uh, both uh, David the Houndsman and I, and our followers, plus the mercenaries that were bought and paid by Walter, who say those that weren't slaughtered in the field, we're stuck in this castle and we're wondering, well, what's going to happen? And first of all, we start to take stock of the thing and we realize that the castle of Zaragordon has no internal water supply. A stream supplied the area that flowed through a valley outside the castle walls. According to a chronicler of the day, the crusaders were so tormented by thirst that they drew blood from the veins of their horses and saddle mules to drink. Some pissed in their hands and drank that. Many dug into the moist ground and lay down, spreading the earth over them to allay uh, their parched thirst. And this will last for eight days, we'll be stuck inside this siege. Now, on September 29th, the scoundrel Walter Pousset, he arranges to sue for terms of peace. And he amazingly even offers the Turk opponents that he will start to fight for them against the other crusaders. Well, once a scoundrel, always a scoundrel. The Turks promise only to spare the lives of those who renounce Christianity. Now, I 
I'm on on this crusade to die on this crusade. I'm not going to renounce that. David the Houndsman, he's not going to renounce his Christianity. So we're going to gather what followers we have, and we're going to try to battle our way out. We're going to sally forth and fight our way out. Some of the men actually do renounce their Christianity. A Walter, he renounces his Christianity, but his reward is that he's not given a chance to lead as a general against his own former crusaders. Instead, they sell him into slavery. He is never heard from again. And the rest of this force that also decides to renounce their Christianity or stays in the castle and doesn't successfully sally forth like my and my followers, they are eventually captured, arrested, and executed. Where am I and Dave and all this? Well, as characters in our theater, we get to try and escape, and that's only fair. Walter came to me to tell me of the terms of surrender. I stuttered, no. I expected to go to heaven, a Christian heaven, for doing God's justice. I needed no mercy, nor would ever offer the same. I would see my fate outside these walls of Zara Gordon. Running out was a brutal calculus. The Turks would kill many, most, but God willing, not all. The enemy encircled, that spread out his force. We would use the night, move down the stream bed. Thirst alone pushed many to agree to try. Drops splashed off the running feet of the men ahead. Catching any on my tongue was the Lord's glimpse of salvation. We're going to make some dice rolls here on Pious Quest. Always back to the Pious Quest. I go to my refs page here. I'm going to roll a d6 for Pious Faith. And I rolled a four. Defeat a Dark Knight. This is one large Turk. Alibaba, a stereotypical. Some guy out of central casting that we have to defeat. And have to defeat this one Dark Knight, and I'm going to do it with uh, Tests of Power. Here comes my dice roll, 2d6 on Tests of Power. I am getting some good rolls here. If they never fail me, this is going to be more of a, a history lesson than an actual gaming event, but hey, I'm not going to complain. Never complain when your dice are good. I have successfully, <laughs> successfully defeated a mighty opponent facing uh, the race of Cain, as my brother Bart calls the Muslims. We are all Christian brothers after all. David made a poem for dawn. Assemble the bracelet bestowers. Conspirators conceal that ambush. Shower the walled with hurled spear. I had David roused his Danes. We could only rest a moment after our mad dash. Miles were crossed. There was no knowing how many escaped. We the fortunate survived, yet why us? Undoubtedly, some sacrificed themselves, turned about to delay the Turk, each to give me several more footfalls of distance. Let nothing be in vain, we needed to keep fleeing. The dogs lapped a drink, refusing the chain tug. A man appeared on the river bank, motioning with a cleaver, yelling orders. I believe from our desperate state, he felt he had taken us prisoner. I spilt his guts before its slashing blade made arc below his shoulders. The dog started a tug of war with his insides. There was no separating them from that prize. Nor could we quiet the barks and growls. Horses, hooves pounding on approach. That last kill sapped all I had remaining. I dropped to knee, yet no end to morning miracles. The horses were the command escort of Brother Bartholomew and Emich von Leninger. They would shield our escape even as the Count scolded me for losing a detachment of his men. Gewicht, gewicht, I murmured as they swung my emaciated frame over the back of a horse. At least my brother was happy. He had long waited to do something significant to be my hero. He later told me he didn't feel as satisfied as he had hoped. With Emich, my brother Bart, and David the Houndsman, plus as many followers as we can rally to get away, we retreat. I realize we are not making any progress toward Jerusalem. At best, we have a stalemate. I try to rally the army to move back to Sevetot and wait for the Normans. We don't have that chest of loot taken by Walter Pousset, and even if we did, there was no armor or warehouse that you can, there's no Home Depot of medieval armor uh, that you, uh, you could have an arsenal just ready for sale. The whole idea was just naive. Now, Leninger calls me a coward, if he does a priest. He wants to continue the fight. He wants to take the fight onto the Turk, and he thinks his Swabians can best uh, any Turk force in the field. I need to convince him to fall back and defend. This is not the time to attack the main body of the Turkish army. Let me make a roll for kingly deliberations here. That kingly deliberation, I'm going to roll a d6. Here comes my d6. 
and I roll a five. Circumvent a scourge to foster fate, yet lose your destined status. No, I'm not going to lose my destined status. That would be terrible. So there goes one of my fostering faith mulligans that I am going to cross off. One more battle, my brothers. One more battle into the breach, as uh, Shakespeare would say. So I'm going to re-roll this instead. <laughs> back to back fives. Circumvent a scourge to foster faith, yet lose destined status. No. Uh, no, I won't. I will re-roll that roll. And here comes my D6. A five. No, it's a three. Okay. I gain a critical deed to foster faith. I lose my plot armor. I think I've already lost my plot armor. I could flare this and say because I've lost my plot armor. Or did I lose it in the last episode? I run some of these back to back. Well, I, when I when I look at this all in, in post, uh, maybe the next time this happens, I'm not promising anything for fairness, to add a little bit of uh, excitement to the whole thing. If I lose my plot armor twice in any game session, maybe I should eliminate all my fostering faith and all those mulligans. Wow, that's uh, that's a terrible idea. Let's uh, let's contemplate that. But gain a critical deed to foster faith, yet lose the plot armor. I'm going to go back to my character here. A critical deed is something I can actually make. Back up to five, even though I just used to. We're going to do this kingly deliberations with a critical deed. And the critical deed probably would be that I will swear fealty to him. Even though I've defeated him once before by swearing fealty to him and giving him his true rank because he is a count, which is a significant figure in the nobility. It's a, a viscount. It's less than an earl, less than a duke, but it still is somebody whose family has had great heritage. And I'm going to pay him fealty with my critical deed here. Do something, anything to get a critical deed. I cannot get a critical deed on tests of power. There's no way to do it. I could roll on tests of power trying to get results of four and five to uh, gain a modifier. And by gaining those modifiers, I could then improve my chances on do something, anything. I might have to go back to do it. But by doing that, I also am going to have other dark knights, other sycophants of Emich von Leninger come to the forefront that I'll have to battle. But do something, anything, rolling one die Rolling one die, taking a result, adding one because I'm destined. It's a four. A revelation. Become an heir for the remainder of this action. Ugh. Now an heir, an heir rolls a single die six on any table. I'm already rolling a single d6, but by becoming an heir, even if I go back to Tess of Power, I'm still an heir for Tess of Powers. I'm only rolling one die. So because I did this vow of fealty, it's changing my persona a little bit. Maybe I'm starting to realize this was a mistake. I owe fealty only the Lord. Do I want to switch tables? I, instead of rolling two dice and taking the lower on Righteous Rewards, I will come after Righteous Rewards as an heir and roll one die and add one for... It is a three. I am weary. If it happens again, I'm going to treat it as a one. I do not want to be tempted going forward and use only do something anything. It happens here, so I definitely want to get off the righteous rewards table. And now I'm looking at the fact maybe I do want to roll some tests of power. Because if I roll, or uh, I do have these, uh, I'm going to take one roll of test of power, a d6, and see if I can get a modifier to help me get through these other tables. <laughs> and a six becomes a seven. I've defeated all the dark ones, the knights, the scourge, but uh, that doesn't help me. Back to do something, anything. I am an heir for the remainder of the action. I'm also, if I go back to Righteous Rewards, I am weary, which means I could get a one, which means I would be forced to use Do Something Anything for the rest of this game. Do not want that. Do Something Anything. Here comes my die roll. A one. A one becomes a two. I get the heraldry. I will now use three die six to resolve the action or change a later die to a six in this adventure. Well, either way, I'm going to win this. That was, thank you, Roll20, that was a beautiful roll to end this adventure. Let me roll my three die six on do something, anything. I'm looking for a critical deed. And I got myself a two, two, and six. That six becomes a seven with destined status. I got my critical deed. Emich did not like Normans. He was not alone. William the Conqueror was widely disparaged for being a bastard king the son of the unmarried Duke Robert, the first of Normandy, and his mistress, Herleva. Small fact that Robert was widely known as Robert the Magnificent. 
the relatively new dynasty in England had a king of illegitimate status, unmarried parents without church sanction. Add to that that William's initial years of rules were near anarchy as he further subjugated Britain's Saxons. Image, as a German shared more heritage with those Saxons. Von Leninger was unconvinced. He saw my offer of fealty as mischief. To him, I was a false prophet and charlatan. What sort of vassal could I ever be? I told him I was more important than most realized. I owned lands in several states. My mother was rich. My family important. My father passed dead. I was the absentee landlord. Brother Bart vouched for all I attested. Bart was a God-fearing priest. His voice carried weight. Forced to orders for being born after, I was his older brother, and I gained all of our father's lands. Primogenitor, only the eldest, is worthy to profit. There was no tally of how much overdue rent I was owed in France. My own debts were forgiven by holy indulgence, but not those of my tenants. Bartholomew even mentioned the toll road of Via Ignatia. Constructed by the Romans so very long ago, those milestones were also part of my birthright. We walked along part of it. Image owed me a farthing. And of course, my fealty includes the champion of Noshan. All feared Alexander's battle presence. Image acquiesced and accepted my fealty. He called me son, even as I was older. He would stay in Sevetot and await these Normans. He also explained my lands became his, uh, should I perish, to a lot anew as I was without wife and child. My brother Bart was legally not of status heir since his family's name became that of Mother Church. My brother Bart and Image von Leninger lead the surviving Taffer back to a Sevetot. I may have lost my plot armor, but I will have it back when I get into episode 6. And that, my friends, will end this episode. Because I have sworn fealty, Leninger is coming back with us. He is going to help the core of the poor people, our unwashed flock of barefoot zealous moving back to a uh, Sevetot and uh, there I sent Alexander with a letter and I asked Alex uh, he needs to return to Constantinople and see if anyone uh, like the Princess Kamina knows when other crusaders might arrive and we're going to end up in going into uh, episode 6 at a later time more later <laughs>